Hi, it's Mr. G here today, and we're going to be looking at 3.5 demand, supply, and efficiency. And so what does it mean by efficiency? We've learned about demand and supply, so what does it mean by efficiency? Efficiency means impossible to improve the situation of one party without imposing costs on another group. So how, what does that mean? Well, it basically means that we're so efficient that we, bas we can't actually improve anything. Uh, unless we, um, so we can't produce more unless we take away from someone else or take away from another group. If we're inefficient, uh, we can benefit one party without imposing costs on another. Basically, we're not using all our resources efficiently, so we're able to use more of those resources, produce more, but we're not taking away from other people. And if you think back to production's possibility frontier, we were inefficient when we were underneath the production's possibility frontier. We could allocate more resources without any trade-offs and get back onto the line. However, moving along the line, that was just trade-offs. That when we were just we we're being efficient and we have production efficiency in that particular case. So that's what we're referring to. Um, so demand and supply, all the benefits being received from trade and scarce resources. So what are we talking about? When we're looking at demand and supply graphs, we are saying that um, this is being efficient. So when we're looking at the demand supply model, we're basically saying that all the benefits we can receive, trade, uh, use of scarce resources, etc., have been allocated, and this is the what a market looks like given that. So it's basically um, very efficient. So we're talking about demand supply. Whenever we're modeling it, we're assuming efficiency, not obviously inefficiency. And so that's an important distinction to make. So if we look at it, um, we're going to have basically a situation such as this. So first of all, let's look at this graph right here. So very typical demand and supply, and we have something called consumer surplus and producer surplus. So what does consumer surplus and producer surplus mean? Well, if you consider it, if we look at this graph um, and we consider it for person number one, Person number one was willing to pay approximately $5 um, for whatever this good is, or widget, uh, we'll say it is. And they were willing to pay $5 for this widget. And if you look, there was two people willing to pay $4 for the widget. And in this particular example, our equilibrium is at $3, and we are basically had four people that are willing to pay at $3. So the first, second, and third person, they were willing to pay higher. So they got, they were willing to pay a higher price, but they got it for a lower price. They only had to pay $3 for this good, um, but they were willing to pay $6, $5, $4. Well, that area underneath there, above the equilibrium line and beneath the demand line, is what we call consumer surplus. Those people that were willing to pay more, but they didn't have to, so they now have a consumer surplus. They have money that can be now used for other things. Now on the other side, we have producer surplus, which is exactly the same thing, uh, except for producers. So we had some producers, one that would be willing to sell goods at a dollar, two that'd be willing to sell at two dollars, some would be, be able to sell 250. Uh, but ultimately we're selling at three, and so once again, at four is going to be the quantity um, at three. And so all that area below the equilibrium line and then above the supply line, well, that is the producer surplus. That's extra money that essentially they're getting uh, from what they were willing to sell. And so if you notice, this is for an equilibrium market. And you notice there's only consumer surplus and producer surplus. And remember, this is efficient. Demand and supply, this this is efficient. And we're going to look at price floors and price ceilings and how that makes it inefficient uh, when we're looking at it. So let's first of all have a look at um, this. And we talked about this already, so we'll just put it in the words. So consumer surplus is the amount individuals are willing to pay less what they actually pay. Producer surplus is how much seller is paid minus the seller's actual cost. So in this example, they were paid $3 and some were willing to pay $1, $2, etc. So there is a producer surplus. 
If you add up the consumer surplus and the producer surplus, you have something called the economic surplus or total surplus. Names are the same or they mean the same thing. Total surplus is greatest at equilibrium. So when the market is in equilibrium, the total surplus is going to be the greatest. Let's see what happens with a price floor and a price ceiling. You can see that it's inefficient. So in the first one, we have a lot of colors. We have a price floor, we have supply and demand, and we have a price floor. And remember, everything above the line is essentially, and below the demand line is your consumer surplus. Okay, But because our line is in equilibrium, our consumer surplus shrunk. Our producer surplus did uh, grow, but because um, we're not being able to sell everything, uh, we have this place in green that's called the deadweight loss. The deadweight loss is the efficiency that we lost out of the market due to um, this price floor being in there. So we could have produced at equilibrium. There wouldn't have been any deadweight loss. But because we are producing at the price floor, we have this deadweight loss, this uh, basically inefficiency that has happened as a result. Um, same with consumer surplus and producer surplus with a price ceiling. Producer surplus greatly shrinks down. Consumer surplus, it benefits them, um, but there's this dead weight loss. And if you consider it, um, you know, as well, um, there's going to be an inefficiency in this case as well, which is equal to the de dead weight loss. And if you actually had to calculate it out, you would just use your triangle formula, uh, half times base times height. Uh, and that's how you actually calculate out the dead weight loss, uh, how much that would be. All right, so we looked right now at demand, supply, and efficiency, how that uh, price floors, price ceilings can create more an inefficient market, how when we're at equilibrium, we do have efficiency happening. Uh, and so those are the main topics then from this section. All right, and that's it. Um, next, we'll be going on to chapter four, where we'll be doing some more examples and going through a little bit more with supply and demand uh, before we go on to elasticity in chapter five. All right, that's it. Thank you and bye for now.